everybody. My name is Sebastian Kerber, for those who don't know me. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the 19th blockchain meetup in Liechtenstein. Um, unfortunately, Klaus was not uh, possible to join us today, therefore I'm standing here. And also Philipp Büchel uh, could not join us today. Uh, it was planned that he has a presentation, but he will do his presentation on the next meetup. Anyway, I hope we can provide you an interesting evening. Um, yeah, and thank you to our sponsors to make this possible. Um, we have great presentations today. First, we have Dr. Otto Frommelt. He is the director of the National Road Office in Liechtenstein. He shows us how we can manage the life circle of a car with the blockchain platform of Car Dossier. Second, we have Kanavidia. Brian Collins, CEO of Horizon Globex, will show us today how we can buy cannabis in a compliant way, secured with applications and the Ethereum blockchain. And finally, we have Bernard Elkuch, who will tell us something about the CV Labs, which now has an office here in Liechtenstein. Afterwards, we can join, uh, enjoy an upload with Käsknäpfle uh, from Martha Müller and water from Mineral Quellen Mels. So now, let's start with the first presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 360 degree management of our vehicle's life cycle in the blockchain, or better, with blockchain technology. So, what does it mean, the management of a vehicle's life cycle? Well, it all starts with the start of a car, i.e. by manufacturing, so to say, its birth. And then it goes on until, so to say, to its death, to scrapping. So that's the whole life cycle of a vehicle in the blockchain with new blockchain technology. And you can say and ask yourself, why blockchain top technology? What does it mean? And I know you are all the experts and the nerds in, in this technology race, but what I can see from my side, there are two crucial points. Today, we are, run, we are working in a database-oriented world which is centralized. And tomorrow, we are working in a blockchain-based oriented world which is decentralized. So it's the complete turnaround uh, from what we do today. And that is what I will talk about. It's a complete change of business which really brings disruption with a lot of opportunities. And I will show you a few. Of course, especially in the in the car and truck and manufacturing uh, vehicle industry. So, let's crack on and let's take you to the journey. I will start uh, with the following uh, legs and themes. First and foremost, a short introduction to set the scene, so to speak, to give you an overview of what I'm talking about, what which is the area, what is going on. Then I will present you a really innovative uh, business case, which is called Car Dossier. It's a car dossier association as a business model, and I will uh, outline you the details. Of course, if you have a business model, you need to manage and govern. So I will introduce to you a new way of, I would say, world-class governments of the future. And I will sum up with three take-away messages. It's like at McDonald's. You take something away, I will give you three messages on your way, and you are most welcome to have a discussion. So, let's cr crack then. Overview introduction. As you can see, I'm from the Amt für Straßenverkehr, or National Road Office of the Principality of Liechtenstein. And yes, 
just to give you a short insight for those who are not uh, from Liechtenstein, we act on behalf of the government and uh, ministry with the following tasks and responsibilities. First and foremost, drafting and introducing European Union, Swiss and Liechtenstein policies and laws and directives for all motor vehicles. This is quite a task and a challenge as a small country, I can say to you, because we are with one leg in the EU legislation, with the other leg we are in the Swiss legislation, and here we are in Liechtenstein and should unite all this. It is also a technology challenge, I can tell you uh, to do this, but as a small, smart and dynamic uh, country, we can truly manage and we, we manage well with a very low cost approach, I have to say too. One of the exciting parts, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, we have a great stakeholder collaboration, we are small, of course, but we are a country with government, EU institutions, UNEC, it stands for United Nations of Economic uh, uh, Commerce Commission uh, of Europe. So all the European laws bring to a wider audience, about 56 states are there, society and industry. So this is quite uh, uh, an exciting task. <clears throat> but of course, what you see is the issuing of trial licensing and vehicle registration with our beautiful black number plates, quite unique in the world. And what you don't like so much, of course you need technical inspections of all uh, uh, vehicles, granted special authorization, even autonomous uh, cars, theoretically and practically. Uh, if necessary, we are able to do this. And also, if you drive too fast, the police will raise its hand and you will get an, uh, an offense and we might uh, take your driving license away. And last but not least, of course, we want to contribute to safety. Just by looking that you are a good driver and that you are, your car is in good order, it's already an important uh, contribution. But of course, we want to do also more. So as you can see, uh, we can, for instance, say, please reduce the problem, I call it, in the, in the laws to 0 0.0, to be very uh, stretching as an example or uh, we could say uh, contributing to safety, sustainability, that we have modern vehicles on the road, and uh, Euro 6 and, uh, and all the things, but also on blockchain mobility, and this is a part which I want to talk about today. So, where do we stand with blockchain, uh, with blockchain in Liechtenstein? Well, first and foremost, as you have read, we have done something really world class, and I would say, I'm impressed about the power of the government and what the, the courage what they have done. We have a world leading Liechtenstein Blockchain Act, which provides legal certainty and also due diligence uh, in enforcement. And this comes in force, foreseen in January 2020. There is a great concept of the container token model and trustworthy technology we can all use. Uh, I do not want to go into details, we have a lot of time to discuss if you want later. And in the 18th meeting, we have also the great two guys, uh, Ralph and, and Thomas here. They explained everything about the legal uh, issues, and, and, and it, which results in the end of the day to conduct business under legal certainty, and this is quite unique in the world. The good thing is, and I'm also impressed too here, if you look, uh, the FMA, it's, uh, I can't see it here today, but uh, they are very, uh, I would say, knowledgeable to enforce and supervise that this really is on a good, uh, good drive, because of course you can do a lot uh, also with Bitcoin, which is not good, and you can do things which are excellent. All this, ladies and gentlemen, is summarized very uh, nicely and neatly uh, here on the screen the whole concept, the whole uh, framework and structure. I don't go further in, but it is you can Google on Thomas Nagele uh, uh, lawyers and you can write and uh, read about them also, uh, definitely also about uh, two of course, the great uh, paper written about how the things are. So this is the, the, the legal uh, technical part of it. Let me come 
really to, that you understand from our side what do we mean with managing a vehicle's life cycle in the, in the blockchain. So this is what, what is in here. Well, first and foremost, it's all relevant data of a vehicle's, uh, of a, of a vehicle's uh, along the vehicle life cycle of a car. So whatever you do, you can, you can store in this uh, blockchain, so to speak, in this ledger if you want. What it does as well, the approach here, you can have transparent, trustworthy, and verified vehicle history reports. So, for instance, if you ever bought a, a car and you said, you know, this has now 100,000 miles on or kilometers, it could be theoretically that it has 200,000, it was put back to 100,000, not in the blockchain and with this concept. And, of course, you have a secure and reliable data exchange with customized data ownership. So if you put something from your car into the blockchain, it's your ownership of the data, and this is very, very important. All the players in this ecosystem has the full rights for their data. So it's, a, it's a moving away from this famous Facebook, where you are the product. Facebook uses you as a product, now you turn it around, and the data is you own it, it's not Facebook who has it upon you as an example. So this is a very, very important thing also from the perspective to make business afterwards. And I will tell you because it's all about business at the end of the day. You want to earn some money uh, from all sides. It has to have value. The last point, uh, digitalization of the vehicle-related ecosystem. So it's about to digitalize all the data in the ecosystem. And now you say, okay, what is this guy talking about? What is the ecosystem? Well, let me explain this and let it run you through. To ecosystem, like you said, it could be a life cycle or a circle. So it's a circle and where is the current situation? Current situation is on this, in this ecosystem, which is so called, of course it starts with the birth, what I told you, to manufacture a car, a truck or a vehicle, a motorcycle, whatever, every resist supplies. And already here, the year afterwards with cannabis. Ah, we want to follow the flow, so to speak. And it's the same here, of course, even suppliers have to tag their parts and put it into the, put, put it into the production. I say could. Uh, and the manufacturer has all, all the data and they could put this into the ecosystem if you want. You have the importers. Importers, for instance, Amag, or even Fry, or for Alpina, Heidegger, uh, so it's important. Then you have dealers and online platforms in the ecosystem where you go to buy your car. You can buy it also on an online platform. You have then the insurance. You need to insure it. Then you have, of course, road traffic authorities where we come into the play, uh, game and play workshops. If you don't want to go to an authorized dealer, you choose a workshop. So again, part of the ecosystem. Of course, you have you as buyers. You have you as sellers, and you have rental companies to rent uh, cars, trucks, whatever. So <clears throat> let's take the current situation. You, sorry if I take you, but you are sitting here. <laughs> so tough luck. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Uh, think about you go to uh, you have a scrap merchant too. So, sorry to say, of course it's the last one because also it comes to the end of, the, of its life. So let's assume you are buying a car. Well, you can go to, to an importer. Uh, they don't like it too much, but you can buy, you know, if you want. They have cars which they have used for their directors and employees. So you could take it from importers or, or direct imports you could take. Or you can go to a leader. Of course, most commonly, you will go to a leader. Let's face it. So far, so it's a first interaction in the ecosystem. So then, of course, you would like to bring this car on the road. Uh, and you need to uh, come, so to speak, to us, if you want. Uh, and you need to have an insurance. And, 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 and. So you want to have a, a car repaired, you might have a, a, an accident, uh, you might have the accident repaired. So all this actually happens in, 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 in this ecosystem, which is completely a complete mess. It comes in the end of life, as you see, either you go to the spread merchant there, 
or, or the dealer will, will do it and bring it there. So, the first point here of the current situation of the, of the ecosystem is a lot of friction in the system. And uh, the data quality, you, it's highly questioned, I have to say. Yeah. Because it's completely, it's everywhere, everybody has it centralized, but it's everywhere, but it's definitely not. You don't have a clue uh, in the end of the day uh, of one of the players is now the data correct and right. For instance, you want to buy a car. So it's a complete mess. <clears throat> so just uh, to tell you now, if you want to imagine you want to, uh, to buy a car, and you would like to buy maybe a Porsche, maybe a Mercedes, maybe a BMW, or God knows, even a Rolls Royce. And it should be nice. It should not be a lemon. In the US, they call the bad cars lemons. And the guys have even a, a law, it's US law, law of the lemons. You can cook it, it's unbelievable. They have even a company as you can read there as a lemon spot. So this is a serious issue, you know, to buy a good car or not. Right? So buying a car in the end of the day is a question of trust. New and used. You, if you have an authorized dealer, of course less. But if you go to private import or you import yourself or whatever, there's a lot of possibilities these days. It's a question of trust. So, the question to reflect for you, how can we trust? What can uh, blockchain technology contribute? And this is what, what I would like to show you where is the solution. Very simple and very clever and very innovative. Solution is vehicle ecosystem in the blockchain with the car dossier approach. Car dossier is an uh, association with 19 members and I will go further into it later. I will explain you how it is set up, how it is done. Let's just stay, let's like, uh, be, be, be there. We are also a, mem a member of this 19 as National Road Office. <clears throat> but let's come now to your technology and technology approach that we have touched it a little bit for the nerds and gurus of blockchain technology. It is actually based on a permissioned blockchain uh, distributed ledger technology. Very simple. So it's private and it's permissioned. And this is very, very important because you want to keep your data, you want not to give it to Facebook and they send it to God oh, knows to whom. It's your data, so it's private and permissioned, and it's for the members who are going to participate and want to participate in this ecosystem. One of the interesting things here as well, it uses shared ledger uh, with self-service identity approach to identify yourself in a very safe, let's call it, uh, mode to do this without going into further details. So what does it mean now? Now, the situation changes because if you want to participate in the ecosystem, you as a, as a, a car owner, you say yes, I want that my car gets uh, here all things done in the blockchain. You can decide, you can say okay, you can buy the car and you can say to the dealer put the data into the blockchain, in, in, in the car to see a ledger. You can decide if you have an accident, put it in. If you have a repair, put it in. So you have every data you want in the blockchain. Now you can see, oh my guys, the guys know everything. No, it's only you decide all the participants who puts the data of their sharing, only those, they, they, everybody owns that part of the data. So mo mostly, if you decide, you know, this is my data, it's your data, but if you say I want to sell the car, well, you give a token, uh, a temporary token, uh, uh, the right to, to, to look at it, and you have verified the heated data, and you can be sure the car you buy has the right mileage has not had uh, an accident or had an accident but was repaired and how was it repaired and had the service. So this is a holistic, complete approach and very important. So point here is you have new, a single point of truth and you can, through smart contracts, and I will show you some examples which we try to do, uh, you can uh, automate uh, processes 
And definitely what you win is trust. Because it's verified, verified, verified what goes into this ledger, which is democratized and decentralized. If you want to know more, uh, there is the uh, website uh, where you can see there is a video on YouTube. You have just to Google Hardossier.ch and you can see. Or if you want to, uh, to know more, I have written two articles about it. It's on Impuls Liechtenstein and also on the Hardossier to find about mobility in the blockchain series. And you can find out a lot of very interesting examples. Even a link to how much energy energy Bitcoin consumes, but that's more or less our story. This is not about Bitcoin. It's about uh, no. but you can find very interesting uh, cases uh, and, and what could be done in the country. Anyhow, more information for you. Now, what does it generate? What is the value out of this? First and foremost, it definitely gives you a better transparency. It uh, a trustful design because of the ecosystem. Uh, there is a shared governance. I will come later to the governance as such. But uh, how do you work together with currently 90 members and you can, are free to join? Uh, it is set up on the basis and the value proposition on a regulatory compliance under the GDPR, so Datenschutzverordnung, Grundverordnung, DSVGO or GDPR, that it, it's you who owns the data, and there is a lot of business potential which I will show you later, in terms of, of, of what you can do and use. Let me bring you to make this, you know, now we have had the big picture. I would like to go from the big picture very much uh, down to a micro example, what for instance we think we could do and what will be done. Uh, first and foremost, Cardossi has about uh, six areas where we could see, uh, let's call it potential business cases. It's on the import process, it's on the used car process, uh, used car market. You can you could trade the car instantly, you know, if you want this one, you have to check up. Uh, it's for heat management, asset management, it's for vehicle registration in the leasing area, and also on the maintenance process, you could all use this. <coughs> As I said, uh, National Road Office, what could we do from our perspective within this ecosystem for us and of course for you? Now, at the end of the day, uh, we want to make your life simple if you come to us. And simple means really simple. And it means fast, it means efficient. <clears throat> what could you do? We do. Well, we could uh, blockchainize the importing process as an example. We can could bring all the vehicle information, it's in the United uh, European Union is called Certificate of Conformity. We could bring this into the blockchain. <coughs> we could create all the vehicle documents in the blockchain. Now we have beautiful black number plates, but we could create digital number plates. Uh, you know all the A vignette uh, on the motorway, it could be put into the blockchain for your car. You have it on. In Australia, you have it as an example. You could use it on the truck road pricing, LSVA, last thing, the Verkehrsabgabe, uh, uh, is a big thing. The, in in uh, Switzerland, Switzerland uh, earns 1.6 billion Swiss francs a year on this tax. Liechtenstein, about 12 million Swiss francs. So we are talking about business uh, here too. We could even do a digital uh, driver license. Uh, the weekly inspection, what you have done, we could bring in to look, car is good, all, all good, could be brought in the blockchain. And of course, we could process, the process could be tokenized, or, or we could token uh, for certain uh, areas, and then uh, also utilize smart contracts. <clears throat> I would like to give you one example, and this affects. 50% of all the Liechtenstein. Because when you come with a car to us, 50% fail. It's, it's a statistic, it's far too high, but it is like it is. Uh, so 50% have to come again. So we have created a procedure, it's called repair confirmation procedure. 
So when you when the car fails, you get a printout and there it is stated, look, these are the defects, you have to repair it. Brake pads, not good, damper, or whatever. Uh, so you have the choice. We tell you, look, you have the choice. There are 38 uh, workshops, garages, authorized, we call it Reparaturbestätigungsverfahren, authorized workshop in Liechtenstein, in Ost Switzerland. So you can go with your car and with this printout to one of these 38 authorized workshops and you can say you need to repair it and they repair it and you don't have to come to us anymore because they are authorized and we know they are good to do this and we also go with them. Right? So, what we said, well, there is a lot of paper involved, so on and so forth. Uh, where do we use blockchain here? It's just one example. We call it from, uh, from paper to e-government to blockchain. And, well, we said, let's create a DAP, a Repair Confirmation Procedure DAP. What does DAP stand for? Distributed Application. It's nothing else than an app, but because it's in the blockchain, it's DAP. And uh, as you know, and of course you can do this, we could tokenize the repair and use smart contract uh, to fully automate this process. There is not a problem. Uh, we are fast, we always say efficient, modern and customer oriented. Uh, we have done rapid prototyping uh, for the application and the network layer, so from the basis how to program this for the gurus who are in blockchain, you know what they're talking about. We have conducted the feasibility study and we are in this design solution phase. Uh, I say design, how we could design it uh, uh, to, to develop this, this DAP. And uh, we think the DAP should, should find itself, so be careful with the money of all of us. Uh, but of course, first we need an initial investment uh, to go for it. <coughs> now, for us, this is a showcase and a testimonial of a DAP. And, uh, you know, we are talking about B2B, B2C, but this is B2A to C, right? Business, authority, and customer. Uh, which, we, we, which we see. And we would use the token uh, approach, we would tokenize, uh, let's call it that, that failure, and the smart contract would trigger, so to speak. When you go to the dealer, he puts on uh, his, his app, he, he reads the code, his token, ah, this is prepared, takes a bit out of the system, what is the mistake, what has to be done, and the dealer has just to confirm with a, with, with, with a pressing a, a button, yes, I have prepared it. And we said now we have to bring in some innovation to, we said, okay, then, then he will ask you, <coughs> can I take you your driving documents on behalf of, of the authority? When you say yes, thank you very much. And then we trigger the smart contract uh, function that it will print automatically in our agency your new documents which will be sent to you. And nobody has to do anything with this automatization on a high level. I have to say, you know, I always say we have not a lot of money, uh, and then we come later, we are very cost oriented, so we are doing a, a joint development with the Swiss Road Traffic Authority of Argau, which are in the car dossier. The president of, of car dossier is actually from the Swiss Road Traffic Authority, so we have teamed up to develop this on a multi-system approach that we have a DAP which can run on different systems in Switzerland. <coughs> now, <coughs> let me just take you out a little bit into the world and uh, I hope you are still with me on the journey. Uh, let me take you to the world a little bit. How to manage the heat ecosystem and create DAPs. Now, I think here again, this car dossier, a lot of companies learn a lot. It's my personal humble opinion, but uh, you can uh, see and judge maybe later. Let me first and foremost explain what is Cardos doing and what, what do we have, to, what have the members to do. Cardos actually has created, based on the secure blockchain for business approach, and yes, you can see here Corda. Corda is, let's call it, a hype ledger technology uh, to create uh, this ledger, this, this uh, distributed database uh, as, a, as, as a, we say the core, not the core, the basics of the platform, car dossier, core, there is a core of the basic record. 
there is all the car, uh, let's call it defined, a hippie and a driver data feeds which you could fill in. It's an empty, it's an empty uh, database, but that's the core. And here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the point here is, because Cartus is an association, it's not a, a limited or an acting gesellschaft or GmbH, it's an association. And there are public, we are in, but also private. So you can't create an AG under these circumstances if you want to do well. So the point here is, there is the public good of this association, of this member. That belongs uh, to them. That's the core, if you are with me. But now comes, of course, the private part. The, as I told you as well, for instance, we could, you can create on this core application step, DAPS. Uh, and we call it the car dossier DAP store. Because, for instance, if you want to buy a car, you need a DAP. You want to have a token, or you want to resell, or whatever, you need a, a DAP from the, the various participants, members in this ecosystem. So, uh, you can access then this core, and via this DAP, via web portal, web applications, or, or, or partner core systems. Partner core systems, so for instance, the system of AMAC, of an importer or a retailer is, is, is a core system of that part. So it may, at the end of the day, be linked, of course, it has to be linked into, into this ecosystem. Um, so that's what we call the private good. So we have a public good, it belongs to all the members, and that is developed as a core to, to do all, all, all the business, that is financed by the members of this 19 today because somebody has to pay this infrastructure if you want to build it. But then we have the private good that you can do on your own. So, for example, the debt we are creating, it's, it, we have to pay it and do it. It's not Carlos Sedas. We are only using the, the, uh, the core, the core base of it. So, the scope, this is the car association scope, and uh, this is the uh, scope to do really business on it. And I have only given you an example now of the uh, of, of our range, but you can do much more, of course. <clears throat> and the approach at that which I say is quite cool and unique. Uh, it's a private public partnership. Par uh, uh, public private partnership. What are the business benefits? Well uh, there are actually minimum four and within these four we have uh, we have much more. Distributed product innovation. Well, you, uh, I think this is one of the most important to, uh, to do business, to do new business in the new world. What I say is the complete opposite. Of course, you can <coughs> tokenize the data and the asset. So I can tokenize, like I explained before, the data of my repair of the car, and I can give it to you for a period of time. You can look at it and say, yes, this is good, this is verified. Uh, you can trade by tokenizing the asset, the card. You can trade it, of course, under the legal law of Liechtenstein, as we have seen, under legal certainty, with all the due diligence and all of it. So, a lot of new business models can here uh, actually emerge. And one of the uh, cool things is it's a trusted distributed data. And when I say trusted, and we also said we have proposed this to the European Union. Uh, what we are, we are doing here, because there is a lot of frauds in it. You know how many guys have bought a car with 100,000 kilometers, and it had two or 300,000, and they just put it on two, on 100,000. <coughs> or they sold, they sold you a car actually to much higher prices, because they had an accident, and it, it, uh, they did say you have no accident, it's all good all and <coughs> So this is a big, big thing. Uh, of course, on the shared operation efficiency, I just gave you a very uh, quick example. I don't know who want to go further into it. There, are, uh, there is also customized, uh, controlled uh, uh, intimacy. Uh, you have the owner manages and transfer value with his own data. This is very, very important. I cannot underline more. And of course, there is a huge possibility of a data market. As I said, you know, you want to sell your car or your vehicle, uh, your motorbike or whatever, <coughs> you can do it uh, on, on, a, on a marketplace with a debt. Right, 
Now, we are only in part two, and I'm looking conscious of the time. <coughs> so, what is the cargo uh, uh, association? <coughs> it has a mission statement, and this is very, very important. Let's just say it for one second here. CARTOC has, has its vision to become the standard platform for data exchange and for managing cross-company processes in the automotive industry throughout Switzerland and Liechtenstein <coughs> as a test market. And then the possibility step-by-step -step rollout to the rest of the European Union. Of course, you must have a market, of course you must enter there, but that is the mission and the possibility. And you could use Liechtenstein as a leg, really, out of Carlos Switzerland, Liechtenstein, to go into the European Union. The vehicle ecosystem in the blockchain mobility is open and jointly developed by all stakeholders. So we are there, as we are one member, every member, can, you can join if you want to do business or create a business or, or create a new business. So most welcome. <coughs> and I think. For the customers here, really, for all of us as citizens, it democratizes data access and becomes a catalyst for digitalization of all actors in the ecosystem. A very important mission statement. Now you think, okay, he's talking about we have a lot of projects, IT projects, never come to terms. I have to say, every month as well, in my old days, a CIO, and I know Chief Information Officer, and I have developed worldwide programs. And I know how you can this man fail, this missile fail, or how good you can be. Right, what I want to say here is here we are not talking blah 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 blah. It is really something is happening. First and foremost, Carlos dossier was funded by InnoSwiss Research. Now we are in the stage of was the association was founded in March this year. We have, joined, we have joined in June uh, this year uh, in the association and it is ready to go live with the core, I'm talking of this space then, which was filled up then uh, in March, in, in spring uh, uh, next year, as, as a base which can be uh, filled. <coughs> Let me just say one thing about the organization. Because, okay, now we have seen Carlos here, a lot of members I talked to you. This is an exciting organization. Because it's the General Assembly which manages uh, in the end of the day and, and has the power, its members, over the board and the cargo sea management. <coughs> and very, very important, we have a very strong data protection committee here because we are trading uh, also data. The interesting part is that the 19 members choose a guy from the legal authority and not of AMAC, Post Finance, Mobility, TCS, uh, or name it. I will just show you a few members. This is very, very important because an authority brings trust. Very important. Hopefully, you can trust the authority. Uh, at least a driving license authority has a high level of trust. Right. Here you can see uh, the members of the association. And as you can see, some really cool uh, players in it. Uh, take Auto Scout, take Boss Finance, take Mobility, and also so on and forth, so forth, especially Amak <coughs> and also Emil Fry. So, uh, also really great. And as you can see, uh, we are two. Now, just one point to you. <coughs> and this is important too, because this is about modern management, public private approach. Participation of public agencies in blockchain consortia socializes blockchain platforms. That is what Gerhard Schwabe says of the University of Zurich from, <coughs> from Blockchain Center, which is also part of this. And as you can see, we four want to take the Wild West. Because who is the Wild West? Fortunately, the guys are not here too much, government, as you can see this. But the Wild West, of course, if you have business here, you can go wild. But we would like to have it really serious, really trust. They will as well, but what I try to say is they will look very much on interests <coughs> for, for themselves. Okay, now <coughs> the benefits for members are, are various. I don't go too much into it. 
it's about uh, that you have early access, for instance, to research. There is the research of Lucerne, University of Lucerne and Zurich. <coughs> we can have co-design, we can share experience, and we can market and, and trade this. Let me come to the third one before we end in, in the forums. The third, I would like to introduce again to really modern new management concepts. Maybe Christian, he can afterwards maybe make himself some reflection about it. <coughs> I, think, I think what this is happening, what we are doing here. It is definitely very different. <coughs> First and foremost, when you are a member <coughs> here, as I said, there are there is post finance, there is AMAC importers, there, there are insurances, there is root authority, there is a lot of confidence theoretically in this old model because everybody in the end of the day wants to make money. Do you think like you may have AXA there and for instance Mobiliar, two insurances, they are competitors, AMAC and, and, and things are competitors. So we have to have a very good governance and especially also for trust. And there is conflict in it. <coughs> so here I want to introduce to manage this first and foremost, we have to change change our mindset. It's not about best practice, it's about next practice. At least those are the words from ZK Prada, which I like a lot. Unfortunately, he died but a great management thinker. <coughs> so what is the next practice? What is the new practice? Ladies and gentlemen. This is about, now it gets truly cool, because this is about distributed culture and distributed mindset. So you see in inverted comma, distributed. I told you, we are not talking about centralization, we are talking about decentralization and democratization. So, <clears throat> as you know, in uh, management theory, uh, it is said, at least Chandler became famous, strategy for the structure. They can beat the tractor and said, well, culture is strategy for breakfast. So, of course, they are all right. So, it only means culture is very, very important, also for this ecosystem. And <coughs> the recent uh, uh, business, uh, let's say, review, now business review in August, the guy titled The AI Powered Artificial Intelligence Powered Organization. You can include blockchain. The main challenge isn't technology, it's culture, right? <clears throat> so, for the blockchain ecosystem of cardio safety function, you need a distributed culture mindset. So, you, it needs really, you have to think, not only for yourself, not only for an AMAC, not only for a, a any fry, not only for a road traffic authority, <laughs> you have to think for all members. It's a very, very important approach. <clears throat> so it's a distributed uh, culture and mindset. How is the Carlos see addressing this? <clears throat> well, I call this first and foremost the government's uh, the government's value chain. <clears throat> so we have all these members in the value chain, and yes, <clears throat> we have a data protection committee who has the power to ensure that on the one hand data is well managed and also governed among all the members because the blockchain, if there is no trust and trust is mismanaged, it will fail. So very, very important uh, thing. <clears throat> now, just two, three things uh, before coming to the end here. I postulate and propose that if we are doing blockchain and manage blockchain also in the future, you, have, you need a technology governance and you need a business governments for the blockchain. So why today, on a very low level of today, yes, it is of course the IT governments, and if Martin Matt would be here today, he would, uh, he would say yes, 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 it is the, uh, the director of, of the Amt for Informatik, <coughs> so we need a basis there. But if we go in a, in a blockchain area, IT normal governments will not be enough. We need a blockchain governance. Now, if we go into a business governance, if we are in the blockchain, <clears throat> like how do you price blockchain services? So you need a business governance uh, from a business perspective, uh, a platform governance, uh, if you create the steps. And, of course, 
you need the corporate governance. Uh, <coughs> and to illustrate this, so there is a strategic level and there is an operative level as a basis to, to run this operation. And uh, if you have a startup company or whatever, I think some of the guys know exactly what they're talking about. I have also mentioned a few startups in my career so far. You need truly a, a governance model. And this is more complicated because we are moving into the blockchain. It's not just IT, it's, it's a new business model and a business approach. So, I am not running through this, but uh, we have uh, uh, developed this together. Uh, actually, what does it mean to have, for instance, a blockchain government? What is in the box there? What do you need to do? I'm not running through this and only saying, look, if, for instance, you have a platform governance, one of the points is then you have IP, IP rights, you have need that governance, you need uh, bursting governance or data pricing governance, so on and so forth. So it's really, it's a new model. It's a new business model on the blockchain. And when we look in the corporate governance, how the association is run and how we do things, again there, for instance, uh, association ownership and structure or oversight and control, regulatory and data compliance, we truly need the governance because this is very, very serious, this ecosystem, having all the information. It must be for knobs. Otherwise, and you must feel that it is for knobs. So, uh, <clears throat> very shortly from the approach here, what we say in the car dossier, and I try to give you a really holistic uh, view out of, of this, is we have a code, we have developed a code of, ecosy a code of ecosystem. All the ecosystem have developed a code. And the point is here, we need to, to protect the code. The ecosystem, this is for, to, to protect it. And we have, uh, of course, means to do it. And then there is uh, the Data Protection Committee, and they have the power for enforcement. Okay? So it doesn't say, if you say, look, you should do it like this, this is one thing. But do we do it? This is the other. So, therefore, it's very, very important and very uh, to, to have this. And of course, th there will be tension uh, that this is done in, 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 a, in a good way. Now, uh, very important two is out of this uh, data protection committee that the data right management of each individual node uh, and relation and this is done uh, through through a trust anchor key and identity key I don't go further into it but I just want to say we have thought about it to have trust on the one hand and enforcement to protect the ecosystem and on the other hand to enforce the ecosystem. So it has also here a holistic approach. And the guardian angel is Ursula Suri from the Hochschule Luzern, who is, a, is heading uh, in informatics of in Luzern and who is heading the data committee uh, here. I know slide 36 and uh, turning in the round to, uh, to end soon, but it is very, very important to bring over the message to you. If you are a vehicle owner, and you have SSI, self sovereign identity, based on decentralized identity technology management, cool thing of blockchain too. Uh, you are the vehicle owner. <clears throat> I told you, you go to the dealer, you go to buy the car, you have sales, you need insurance, so you have an insurance certificate, and these are the interfaces. You go to the road traffic authority, and, and there is the importer and, and uh, manufacturer. So the COC stands for the document. 2020 in Switzerland, or Certificate of uh, Conformity in the, in the European Union. You have all the vehicle data there. So the manufacturer will give definitely that data to the dealer. And uh, the dealer will definitely give it to you because you have bought the car. And if you want to come to the uh, Traffic Authority, you will definitely give it to us. So the point here is uh, everybody there in this interface owns the data. Of course, if you give you as a owner to us as an authority the data, then it's your data, but also our data. But it's shared data in a decentralized mode. But what I try to say is there are instances, for instance, in a vehicle registration, yes, you will give the data, but if you go for a service or for a repair or for maintenance, 
It's your data with the dealer, the, uh, with the dealer together. You will tell the dealer, yes, you could put this repair into the blockchain, right? But you own the data. It's very, very important to bring this message over. Because with that data you own, you can trade afterwards. You can tokenize the trade. So, uh, and then, as I told you, with the inspection, it's very important. Let's come. It's time to get to the takeaway into summary. Uh, because there are other guys too. Three, I told you three takeaway messages, only one slide left, so hallelujah, we have done it to here. Uh, summary, point number one, the association stewardship is conducted by regulatory authority. As I said to you, the guy, uh, the president, he is from uh, road authority. What is very, very important, intergovernmental institution supports and uh, trust building, and, I said to you, Thinking and acting with a distributed mindset and distributed culture is a must-have. Absolutely must-have. It's distributed. It's democratized. And we have to see that. And we have to see uh, it, it is managing the common, so to speak. The second one, what I showed you as well, is it a strong, strategic and operative governance approach is needed. It is more complex having this technology into the blockchain and have this business uh, in, uh, with blockchain, so you need a good governance. And, as we have seen, I told you, the code of ecosystem supervised their data protection code, uh, committee and being authorized to sanction. So if some in the, in the, in the ecosystem do, does not fulfill, he has to be sanctioned. Otherwise, it is not biting. And the node management is done with a trust anchor and by a key, uh, a, a, a trust anchor key and key uh, an uh, identity key. So that's the second takeaway. So the last takeaway of today is, and this is for me at my heart, blockchain technology is truly an enabler to tokenize data and assets to do what? To transfer value. It's your value you can transfer. But the most important here, the trust, is the currency for the business success. And by that, I can only say we are uh, ready to click and drive in 360 degree vehicle management and you are welcome to join in. So thank you very much. And I can take questions later uh, for, uh, if you have, for challenges and discussion about their result. Thank you very much. Maybe now my question is a short question I have. Uh, I have to do my check for the car in about one year. Can I already use Carlos here? Uh, no, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay. It's a good question. I say no, not yet. Uh, if you, there would be a possibility, I would say, realistically about June, if you really would like to do it. There could be a, a possibility. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Now our next speaker is Brian Collins. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brian Collins. I'm going to do a presentation this evening on Cannabis, the product for cannabis tracking, but more on a regulatory compliance side of things, uh, addressing one of the key problems that cannabis growers in Switzerland and Liechtenstein have regarding exports of their product through to the European Union. Uh, one of the key problems that they face is the fact that you have a THC concept, which is the psychoactive element of the cannabis plant. It's not allowed to be above 0.2% and it needs the jurisdiction of Switzerland. Proving that is a lab test, for instance, but there have been growers, let's call them, uh, who have taken advantage of that regulation and shipped goods outside of Switzerland, which have had a THC content and thereby blocked and really damaged the business for most Swiss growers at the moment. So Swiss growers, which find growers and producers, are now looking for solutions in this space uh, to prove and attest to the quality and the uh, repeatability and the uh, ordinance of their products. So what we've brought in on our technology side, we, we work on the compliance space very closely with securities regulators in particular in North America and Europe regarding issues of shares and blockchain and those kind of things. So we uh, are 
quite au fait, if you like, with all the regulatory space regarding certain regulators. And now we're dealing with the next set of regulators, which will be import-export regarding the novel food act of the EU. So we're really not addressing the THC psychoactive element of cannabis. We're really only after parts of cannabis for CBD products, for health foods in particular, skin creams, tinctures under your tongue, all those kind of things that are quite popular, as you can imagine. So what we do is we KYC all the participants. That's the first and most important step we find, is that the farmer himself, although they're a little more advanced than traditional farming, but the farmer himself basically has a various set of staff with horticulturalists, people who work in the cold press rooms, they make oils, pickers, and so on. So what he has, for each of those people, he has a role that they perform, and each of those roles basically has to be attested to. So in order to attest something being true, then we need to know who you are. So we actually do a KYC, so know your, your customer, know your, your uh, employee, effectively what this is. So ultimately when goods like cannabis are shipped in packages throughout the world, uh, particularly throughout Europe, the, every single step that has touched that particular package has to be known to the farmer and everybody who participated in that step has to be known to the farmer. So then we track each of those steps from cutting from the mother plant all the way through to drying to producing the oil and so on. Each of those steps is defined by the farmer individually. He tells us what he has to do and every single participant of that step will attest to that step. I'll show you this in a moment. And then what we do in the end if we prove the ordinance, the good custody of this particular package that's now on its way to France or Belgium or wherever from Switzerland. So the whole idea is the last part of the proof, and the proof is really what the regulator is after. And ultimately, really what the regulator is after is if there is something wrong with this shipment and that it has too much THC, they basically need somebody to prosecute. And the farmer doesn't want to be prosecuted, the truck driver driving the truck doesn't want to be prosecuted. So the whole idea here is there's a whole chain of custody and attestations that somebody somewhere will be found out if they've tampered with the product. So it gives the regulator a lot of comfort, and that's what we petition with the attorneys that work with the shipping companies in particular. That's what they petition the regulators to actually take a look at it on the import export side of things. So we KYC with the app, we notarize every single step. We use it on the Ethereum public blockchain, so the largest public distributed blockchain in the world, besides Bitcoin, and we do that using smart contracts. So that whole chain of custody, the fingerprint of everything that's happened, has has, uh, has basically been attested to on the blockchain. So we take the data, whether it's a photograph or a, a photograph of a lab report or indeed a PDF of a lab report, we take that data and we put it in secure document storage, which I'll get to in a moment, and then we take a fingerprint of that data and we put the fingerprint actually on the blockchain. So we don't put data on the blockchain, just the proof of the data. So if somebody tampers with the data, we know that it has been tampered with. That's very important for us. The document management is probably one of the most crucial parts of this entire ecosystem from a regulatory point of view because you have retention policies and so on that need to be uh, adhered to. It's not enough to just gather the data, you actually have to prove that this data has not been tampered with. That's the tricky part, believe it or not. And then track and trace, of course, we're all pretty familiar with tracking numbers of shipping packages from A to B. So we link a batch or a growth or a mother plant and so on to whatever shipment methods. If it's a DHL package, it can only be shipped from uh, the farm base. And the final thing really is to push for compliance on CBD exports. So no matter what CBD products are arriving in wherever, Belgium, Austria and so on, you can, as an importer, you can take a cure, a scan of a QR code and it will show you the life cycle of this particular batch. So that's quite an important uh, role for us to play. In the space of names that you won't have heard of, really KYC is one thing, notarization, parts, and there's a few other new players here. Um, then you have the likes of uh, Viva and DXC. These are companies, again, no one here has probably heard of, but they, these are really document management companies for uh, very high-end uh, storage of data for medical trials, all those kind of things. These are multi-billion dollar companies that none of us have really heard of, but because they basically work with big pharma and big banks and so on, storing data properly, compliantly, with tamper evidence, that's very important. Track and trace, you can see there's some various guys coming out of the US, in particular in the THC space, because although cannabis is legalized in eight states now for 14, it's still not legal to move it between states. It's a rather convoluted sort of situation in America right at the moment. So you can grow whatever type of cannabis you want, both strains, the marijuana strains, you've got THC component, and the hemp strain, which has no THC, um, but exporting on the state is actually quite a topic at the moment in the United States. And then the compliance item, METRC metric, which is probably the largest system there, it's a fairly uh, heavily used, but uh, interesting uh, platform, I'll say. So there's a few other players here in this landscape. 
What we're doing here in Switzerland, we have one of the growers, which is down in Morton, which is uh, down by Barn here in Switzerland. We have Globex, I also represent the Globex company. We're a software business based out of Zoo uh, and uh, New York. I'm our main research and development centre in Ireland. You may have heard from my accent, I'm not Swiss. Uh, and then finally, the track and trade side of things we have with the, uh, the whole, with a few exporters here that we're working with alongside with the growers, the farmers. So, why is CBD so important? And this is something, I suppose, if you're not in the cannabis space, it's something to understand that the market itself is absolutely booming. And a lot of people who are interested in CBD are really not cannabis people that we all think of as a smoker. They're actually people who want the health benefits, the calm, mood, all those things that have some claims that they make that are not allowed to make publicly, which you know, helping with epilepsy and various other things that CBD can be proven to, to help with. But these are not medical uh, discussions, these are food discussions, effectively. So uh, it's still a, a massive, monumental business set to grow to around $20 billion. The issue that the Swiss growers have is that they're trying to export their product outside of Switzerland is actually quite a challenge for them. And one of the main topics there really is about trying to get the THC content down to prove the fact that the THC content is as low as the claim. But it's quite an interesting space here if you look at the distribution between men and women who like the CBD and all those things, and really it's kind of dominated between the 18 and 34 year old men. So for us on the demonstration side, really all I do is I'll switch quickly over to my smartphone. Did you see it on the screen? Yeah. Uh, I'll fire up uh, the KYC system. So here's where the farmer basically says to one of his staff, you need to work for me. If you're going to work for me, I need to know who you are. So you're going to tell me about yourself, your social security number for an American, for instance. Uh, I do a very simple system here. So this is me now telling the farmer who I am, and therefore I am going to take responsibility for all the roles that I perform within the farm. So whatever those roles are, the farmer will attest to them. There's my information. I can now create a private key, so I can assign all my transactions using an Ethereum. Uh, key. I do that on the phone, and that's it. I've now basically set myself up. I'm not going to tell the farmer more things about myself. I can sign a contract with him, whether it's an employment agreement or whatever, it doesn't really matter. All this information is kept and maintained by us on behalf of the farmer, where we can take ID now. So, for instance, you can take the uh, driver's license picture. If you're really eagle eyed, you can see that it's not me. So. And then the next part is take the utility bill, for instance, there's lots of things we can prove who you are and so on. The next we have a video Q&A where we have a liveness detection from an actress. will ask me a question to state a number and colour that's randomly generated so that to prove I'm actually real. So it's uh, five yellow. And then she'll also ask me to wave my Swiss ID, my driver's license, my passport in front of the camera to make sure it's not a fake copy printed on a piece of paper. No comment there. So that's it. So I've now told the farmer who I am, I'm about to go to work for this farmer. If I do anything untoward, I can now be tracked down by law enforcement if I've done something that the farmer has said that I shouldn't be doing. So now I have to go and prove my cell phone number is legitimate and a few other little steps that were taken. Take a cell phone, SMS, sign and upload the data pack. So now my information is pushed to a server operated by us on the hands of the farmer and we put all of that information, we take a digital hash of it, you see at the bottom of the screen there, uh, ending BFE. That's a fingerprint unique to this data set. So I can't deny that I sent this data, and similarly, the farmer can't tamper with my data to pretend I'm somebody else, or some, my wife does a fake interview and then he changes it with my data. Nobody can tamper with this data with this fingerprint. This fingerprint then goes onto the Ethereum blockchain and sits on the Ethereum blockchain until the user is ready to be uh, reviewed. So now, on the Ethereum blockchain side of things, the farmer will now download the information pack from his employee, he takes this information down like this and he reviews the information to make sure it's legit and everything is uh, as it should be. So we can go over here, and then we'll go over here, here. <coughs> Here's my KYC data for instance. Uh, we have this information is basically what the regulator wants to see about every participant in the value chain of this particular uh, submission. This user is going to allow me to do this thing. So once I create this user and submit him to the farmer, the farmer will then go ahead and review him. So once he's reviewed successfully by the farmer, he will actually put it in. You see it up there. And he can put it in and verify that this user is who he says he is. Once he's done that, he can actually go ahead as well and verify using AML systems. So from an anti-money laundering point of view. 
this person has appeared on any lists, for instance, OFAC, FinCEN, Interpol, and so on, he can actually check that his employee who's just arrived said, hi, I'd like a job, I'd like to work in a cannabis farm. He wants to make sure that he's not a bad actor in any way and known to the authorities in, a, in any public way. So that's one of the most fundamental parts of KYC part of the individual himself. And then really the next part for the whole ecosystem is to try and understand what this person is going to do for the company. So really what the company is now going to do is he's going to hire him, let's say, as a horticulturalist. And let's say he's going to take some information from here. Those of you who are not familiar with how cannabis actually works or how cannabis growing works, you label your plants. You then have a mother plant. This is a typical flow. It's not the only flow. You have a mother plant. Those of you who don't, you grow this huge cannabis plant, believe it or not, and you do certain things with it from a farming point of view that doesn't make it flower. And you take cuttings from the plant. And you plant those cuttings into small trays. And those cuttings now sit in the tray for a few days, and they will eventually grow a root. When they've grown a root, you plant them in a greenhouse. A large greenhouse will have multiple sheds like this. Sheds in Swiss German are also called ships. So a lot of terminology we talk about here today is ships. And each ship has an identity. And then when it's grown and picked, it comes out of the ship, and the flowers are picked and put into a drying oven, just like this. And you dry those flowers. And after you dry the flowers, that's what they look like. And then you send it out for analysis to a lab. And then after the lab test comes back, you then put it through. This is a cold press. This is a system where you put the dry flowers in, and you mix with ethanol, and you squeeze out CBD oil. It's all really kind of straightforward, actually. That's how the whole system works. And then you ship the product. The reason I want to show you these individual steps is that I can go back to my app here and just give you an example. I played the role of horticulturalist. I'm now going to plant the mother plant. And now I'm going to say, OK, show me what the mother plant looks like. And now I'm going to go up and take this mother plant, take a photograph of it. And now, as you see a button on my app here, I can now notarize the fact that I am going to take a copy of my horticulturalist. I've proven myself. I know I am to the farmer. I'm going to take a photograph of that mother plant that I'm about to take cuttings from, and now I'm going to post that notarization on the blockchain. So this will begin to tell the story of this product that you've now found on the shelf of your store in Zoog or wherever you're going to buy it. So that's the first attestation. And next thing you would typically do after a plant is you plant the tray. So now you're going to take a photograph of the tray itself, for instance here. So you take a photograph of the tray. And I go back here. And there's my tray. Now you use the photograph and I notarize the tray. Really what we want to show you here then is how this whole ecosystem on the smartphone uses my face ID to unlock this particular photograph, then sign this transaction as a blockchain transaction on my phone, so I can't deny it was me, then send the fact that I'm going to put this tray into growth, and now I'm going to attest to that fact. So we can now tell from the mother plant the genome, the mother plant the tray, the ship, all the way through, and we will now go and create this whole ecosystem on this uh, service back here, and then eventually we'll basically go back from the horticulturist over to an external lab, and we do a lab test. So we've gone through this whole system, and now we go through the lab test comes back, for instance, from uh, our labs in wherever. Uh, here, here's my lab test. And why am I showing this? Well, if I can show the regulator the entire flow from planting all the way through to the lab test itself, then the regulator is very comfortable in the fact that this is all true. That this product has come about from legitimate planting, legitimate harvesting, legitimate pressing, and actually has proper uh, lab test attestations. And eventually then the lab test itself will come back and we do some uh, THC reduction. There's a few other things that you have to do in the cold press. And then really the final thing is you go to distributors. And this is the important point really from a, a regulatory point of view, is once you've got everything set, you're now going to send these goods to whatever. Let's say that's a typical uh, photograph of the shipping label. Now in transit, anybody, once the shipping label is done, this application then will go ahead and generate a QR code. And the QR code is now going to effectively tell the story using a web browser of this plant and of this shipment. So this is really the regulated world, the import-export world belongs here at the QR code. Because they can come in with their system. I'm going to change this here. Let me show you here. With their system, they can come into this service here. And now with their photograph, go and take a picture of the QR code. And you see it's going to open up a website. 
this website then, this is the regulator's form. So now the regulator is going to come in and be able to see what's on this, what has been notarized, uh, what has been done, when it has been done. He can actually have a look at whatever photograph it was. And there you go, there's the regulator knows this shipment was from this package ID. It was shipped on this date by this person. It's in this truck. Everything is in here. If you clone this package, we have a, what's called a digital twin technology to make sure that you can't clone it. And you can then at the regulator, this whole system will tell you all about this particular package. It will show you its lab test results when they were taken. It will show you the, the ship it was planted in, the planting tray it was sat in, all these other things. So the regulator, the importer, exporter, and indeed the driver of the truck are much more uh, at ease now. The fact that the shipment that they have can be proven its entire chain of custody all the way through to this package label. If they don't match, then the import exporter knows that this label doesn't match the shipping label. They know there's a problem with this package and they can flag it and put it out of circulation. Therefore, that driver doesn't go to prison, basically. That's what it's all about for the uh, shipping company. So that's really what I wanted to show everybody on this whole cannabis compliance system. Uh, it's a relatively hot topic, as you can imagine at the moment, uh, in the sector. But there's an awful lot of people in it who are less knowledgeable on what actually happens behind the scenes, I would say, because regulators are all fine and good about you know, how clever and all these things that these smartphone apps are and how clever the blockchain is. But in the end, they still have to know that the data you have hasn't been tampered with. So just to give an example, this is what a data set set of rules for a regulator looks like. One piece of data that you put on your hard disk at home or I put on my laptop, these are the rules that the regulator actually looks for as to how you manage your data. That's why these multi-billion dollar companies are in business in that this is what they do, this is how they manage data. These services can be done on Azure and on Amazon AWS with the right policies in place and the right team in place. And once you have them in place, you can then show each of those points on this diagram, you can show each of those points then basically on your IT system as to where you touch your IT system and how you maintain compliance. So all the clever stuff is done on the phone, all the clever stuff is done on the QR code, but the regulator has to trust the fact that all the data they see is legitimate. And this is what's really important about this service. You can see we have retention policies, for instance, uh, customer complaints or list of principles in charge of compliance. You've got to maintain that data for six years live on the blockchain. So if any regulator comes along and says, OK, who said it was clean? Who's your compliance officer? Tell me about that. And we show him a photograph, we show him his attestations, we do all of those things. So that's what the whole system actually has to do as an entire ecosystem, is to actually make sure that all parts of compliance are done in a compliant manner and a correct manner that we can prove to the importer and exporters. Because in the end, if you're moving drugs over a border with THC in them, you're not far off shipping cocaine. It's a really serious problem. So to make sure that you do it right, you have to cover every single element from the seedling all the way through to the package that's in the back of the truck. And you want to make it easy for these regulatory bodies to actually be able to scan the QR code and say, yeah, we see the life cycle and the life span of this particular product. So that's really what we want to, uh, in, if you like, tell people about how the whole system works. So I'll leave it at that. Anybody have any questions? Well, how, do you, how do you protect the QR code from not getting traded for the wrong purposes? Yeah, this, uh, QR codes are an interesting one, because of course you can just clone one, right? So there's a concept of a digital twin, which is where you create a physical package of goods, let's say the smartphone, you create a physical package of goods, and we do that when we say generate QR code. We know there's a physical package, we know there's a photograph and an attestation on the blockchain. And now we actually create another QR code effectively and send it to the receiver of the goods. So let's say the Belgian uh, factory that's making the skin cream, the lady skin cream, which is quite popular. So you're going to ship that, and at the other end, they have another QR code, but only they have that code. So while this QR code is in transit, it's not joined with its digital twin yet. Its digital twin is in Belgium. So its physical twin is moving towards it, and the regulator scans that QR code and knows it's in transit to Belgium. If that doesn't tally, there's a problem with this package. If it does tally, however, and it gets all the way to Belgium, the Belgian receiver scans on our side using our system, because he's been KYC, he scans and say, I have received it, and the digital twin merged with its physical twin. Now if you clone that QR code and stick it on the next package, it will flag immediately to the regulator and say, this package is not in transit. It has been delivered, we found it on the truck, it's illegal. So the code has been cloned. It's quite complex, but that's how you actually manage the whole system end to end. But the key is now you make sure that your code generation is protected first. And that's really why the IT infrastructure is so complex. Well, we're not a huge fan of this as, a, as an assistant.
size. Some people are tagging all of the plants themselves, or seven of the plants in every, every ship, using NFC tags. And there are single-use plastic, single-use uh, cell uh, chips, and all those things, and antennas and stuff. And we don't really think that's a very sustainable model. So all of our tagging systems are all reusable tags, so we can uh, use for the next ship, and next batch, next trade, and so on. But it's not everybody who kind of gets how the flow of these CBD systems actually works. It's actually quite a, a complex process and trying to protect everybody in the value chain and the chain of custody is uh, it's a challenge. Yeah. Is this limited to the use case of cannabis or are you planning to roll out that? I mean, there is a lot of use cases that could be natural, right? Yeah, indeed. One of the other major use cases, of course, is organic food. Uh, to prove organicness, so to speak. Uh, but right now, it's, uh, the highest demand for our technology is really coming from people trying to protect the drivers. It's a major issue for the drivers, in that if they're shipping goods over a border, they go to prison. So, uh, the, if you like, the interest on the commercial side from us is really from these large firms that want to protect uh, everybody in the value chain. So to give you an idea, the commercial is a cost about 1,000 francs to create a kilo of cannabis dry flowers, and the retail price of a, thousand, of a kilo of that is 4,000. Right, so it, it's quite a significant uplift for a farmer not to be able to ship these goods properly. Because right now, without getting too detailed, some of them are, are shipping them in the grey zone, as you may know, right? so they're kind of doing this, right? There's no THC, we tested it, it should be fine. But it's not fair for the driver to do that. And they know that. Thanks, also. Yeah. So we'd like to see it on the organic food side of things, and lots of other things on the agri sure business, if you can certify things in the agricultural sector. Just for the QR code, Ours is very much regulatory-driven QR code, but on a consumer basis, yeah, the consumer QR code on our side tells a video story, you know, a, a kind of a pretty story of the plan and how it picked in and all that kind of stuff. So you can make it kind of nice too, rather than one. Any other questions? Good, I'll leave it to you. Now the next presentation, Bernhard Elkuch. He will tell us about the uh, CV Labs, new CV Lab in uh, Liechtenstein. So no worries, this takes not more than maybe three minutes. I know you are tired and it has been a long day. I just arrived from Singapore from the FinTech Festival. It's one of the, I think, the biggest FinTech events globally. Um, so I'm tired. No, no, that's just kidding. And it's, it's really, I mean, it's the recognition of Liechtenstein, people knowing the space, is really awesome. And I mean, the, the act is coming up is really recognized globally. And I, if this is going to be true, what I feel, uh, it's going to be a weight for us in terms of, of blockchain and blockchain ecosystem. And yeah, in addition to what we have today in the house of blockchain and we have it here in Technopark, um, we decided with our friends from uh, ZV Labs and Zook to open up another blockchain ecosystem here in Vaduz. We think at a kind of a prime location. Um, you might recognize this fairly old building. So Thomas Pagliner uh, uh, told me it was built in 62, 68, something like that. It's fairly an old building. And some business started in there. I think it was kind of the old fiduciary business, or do you call it like that? So our trustee business. So something like that started in there. And what we, what we do now there is building up the blockchain ecosystem and starting the next generation of wealth. Which is, which is kind of a, a nice analogy and, and a great story. And this is something, if this, what I felt in Singapore, comes into our small country, I think we need ecosystems here and support from all the regulator, the authorities, and so on. And it's great and refreshing to see. Thanks, Otto, for your presentation. It's awesome, as, as well as Brian. I mean, Thinking about three years ago, attending these meetups, the first meetups back in 
Kunst, uh, Kunstmuseum, Café Kunstmuseum, and so on, with five, six, seven, eight people, something like that. I mean, it's not a lot today. We have even we have had more. And today we are not talking about cryptocurrencies, ICOs, and all that stuff. I mean, it's still there. I know. But today we have heard about real case stories and real case business cases, and and it's just great how this evolves over time and, and this makes me really happy because it's not all about crypto and trading I know a lot of you guys doing that but it's about bringing blockchain into the masses by having real cases uh, and bringing it into the industry and I hope a lot of you would agree and what we try to do with our partners at CV Labs and you see some of them we have some founding partners but also some really nice partners like Mason Bank from, uh, from Liechtenstein as well um, we are working with them together uh, on, on really bringing that into their knowledge from banking and in, into the blockchain space, um, as well as some other partners like Anton, Niedermüller, Megile, and so on. Um, we, will, we will we try to have this ecosystem here in Vaduz by having kind of, of, of co-working as well with small events. We call it uh, Wine and Vision. So come by drink a glass of wine, listen to one of our partners, um, get to know the space, which is really nice, it's for free. I mean, uh, just join and drink the glass of wine with us and listen and do networking, um, as well as incubation programs. So the next incubation program is who will start next week with 10 uh, international startups, which are which has a global footprint. I mean, we have from Brazil uh, all over the globe, and which is really interesting because Liechtenstein will, at 6th of December, become the center for those startups for a whole day. So we will have the opportunity to present our ecosystem to and Liechtenstein to 10 startups which has the potential. They have been selected for, for more than 600 applications. 600. So it's not just some startups. This is potential even for us as a country, and we will have the opportunity as CV Labs to host them for a whole day and bring them the values we have in here and, and, and bring them with the value closer and hopefully they get in touch and get fell in, fall in love with Liechtenstein and uh, will set up their business within uh, our ecosystem. If you want to speak, it's Philip and me here, uh, I think we both some, I mean, I did not introduce myself because I assume most of you know me. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so Philip and me are kind of the ecosystem leaders here in Vaduz. And if you are ever around this area, give me a call or a telegram. I'm in the group here um, as well. Give me a call or a telegram. It gets world-class coffee. You get a world-class coffee in our crypto coffee at the fifth floor. Uh, I can assure, we have a very, very nice coffee machine, so we are all, you are always invited to drink a coffee with me. I will prepare it special for you. Um, and so, this is my last words, I think. I wish you all a good networking, good food with Kesknöpfle. I think it's delicious. And take care. Thanks. So now we are almost done. It was a very exciting evening. Um, I can already smell the cask nap flip, but first I just want to say a few words about our sponsors. We have Eternity. There are some really interesting projects already working on Eternity. The Blockchain Bureau with Philipp Büchel, who has done a lot for education in the blockchain business here in Liechtenstein. The CV Labs. A new place for startups, core lecture with an uh, interesting end to end technology to find the right uh, trading partner, Garden Group, our company, a fiduciary company, blockchain advisory, Globex Horizon with a wide uh, portfolio of services and products for KYC, custody, and exchanges. Nekile Rechtsanwälte the blockchain lawyer here in Liechtenstein and Sirius Trusted Technology, our uh, company for trusted technologies services. So now thank you everybody for joining us to, to, today and now uh, enjoy the apero with the guest Thank you very much.